very nature of police motorcyclist job demands skills above and beyond that of a standard DVLA riding test. We had the privilege of having had some of the best rider training available anywhere in the world based around police system riding techniques. The aim of this video is to share with you some of that training in an attempt to reduce road casualties and enhance your enjoyment of our chosen mode of transport. When we talk to bikers about improving their skills, most cite cornering as an area in which they would most like to improve. That is what we've chosen to focus on in this video. Before we even start to consider how to negotiate a bend, we need to assess how we position ourselves on the machine in order to work with it and not against it. The most relaxed position is to have the arms slightly bent and shoulders relaxed with a secure but not vice-like grip on the handlebars. Being relaxed will allow you to concentrate for longer periods before fatigue sets in. The additional benefit is, if you're conscious about how you're positioned, you will realise when you're about to enter a bend too quickly, because you will straighten your arms, grip more tightly, turn in too early and shut the throttle. You'll become transfixed by one point in the bend and usually lead the road at that point. The biggest barrier to confident and safe cornering is a lack of information as to how severe the bend is, if you like, fear of the unknown. So what clues do we look for to assess this? As a motorcyclist you should always pay close attention to the condition of the road surface itself, but in addition to this, the painted road markings give us clues as to the sharpness of the bend. Notice how they change from lane dividers, short lines with long gaps, to hazard lines, long lines with short gaps, to solid white centre lines preceded by towing in arrows. There may also be slow painted on the road. The basic rule to remember is, the more paint, the worse the danger. As the bend begins to open, the lines will break again. Look into the bend. If you can see the point at which they break, and you're happy that you can cope with the bend as you see it, you can finish any reduction in speed and settle into the bend. Don't accelerate any harder until you can see that the road ahead is clear. You may even see the actual road surface change to one that affords more grip and is usually a different colour. This isn't a cheap process so ask yourself why. You may also notice skid marks left by other vehicles. The bend may not be as gentle as it looks from here. Basic warning triangles are a rough guide to the direction a bend goes in but they don't give much information as to the severity. They are worthy of note though if only to tell us about possible hidden junctions in the bend. A much better type of road sign is this type of sign. They're much more descriptive and almost appear to draw the road ahead accurately. Chevrons give a much more obvious one of a sharp bend so ignore them at your peril. Sometimes you may see this type of fencing on the approach to a bend. Hardly ever does it have anything dense growing behind it. Anticipate that this may be the first point at which a view will open up across a bend. Hedgerows and tree lines may also give a clue as to where your road goes, but don't rely on them 100%. If we look at this bend we can see the back of the hedgerow and a field, so we know that the right-hander cannot be any more severe than that. It may however go sharply off to the left where we can't see. Always enter at a speed where you can make allowances for that. Look for gaps in hedgerows or even gateways to gain an extra glimpse through a bend, no matter how brief. That fraction more information may save your life. You just never know what kind of danger may lie around the next bend. Lamp posts and telegraph poles may also indicate the direction of a bend. Vehicles ahead of us can also help us assess the bend. Look at where they break to, usually until they can see a way out. Vehicles travelling towards us can also assist us. Look at the attitude of the vehicle and its line leaving the bend. Obviously both these pointers are relative to the type of vehicle. The limit point, often referred to as the vanishing point, is the furthest unobstructed view of the road surface ahead of you. The easiest way to understand this is to imagine the whole road blocked just out of view around the next bend. Then ask yourself, can I honestly stop before I hit it? If you couldn't, then reduce speed. As the bend opens, you will naturally chase after the point and away towards the next hazard. Gather this information like building a jigsaw. Don't just stare at it or you'll get drawn offline. Collect lots of little pieces 
and after each one return to see where you are on the road. Start collecting them early. The more pieces you have the better the end picture in your mind will be before you commit to the bend. Now we know what to look for we have to put ourselves in the best position on the road to get that view. The additional benefit to this is that it will also increase the radius of the bend and not work our tyres as hard. If we then have to take evasive action we can change direction or brake with more in reserve. In simple turns we position to the off side of our lane for a left bend and the near side for a right bend. Look at the difference in view between a tight racing line and an advanced road line of approach. Remember that we don't position unless the road conditions and speed warrant it because we could confuse or mislead other road users. In addition, you must remember that your position must be sacrificed in the interest of safety. This rider has positioned too close to the near side for a right bend when there's hidden danger on his left. In this example, he's overcompensated for the potential danger and put himself too close to the oncoming traffic. The best compromise is to achieve the near side position just after the junction. Remember to take account of the road cambers before they take a grip of your machine and adjust your line accordingly. Once you've assessed the severity of the bend, you'll have an idea as to the safe speed at which you can go around it. Adjust the speed early and smoothly without unsettling the machine. What gear you select will depend on your machine, but needs to be in the bike's power band to pull it efficiently around the bend. If conditions are slippery, your choice of gear should be higher to avoid wheel spin. Again, do it early to avoid rushing. Remember to blip the throttle on down changes to match engine speed to road speed and avoid locking the rear wheel up. Do this all in good time so you can create a check zone. Time for the machine to settle before you enter the bend. In order to turn the bike effectively we need to counter steer the machine. That means to turn the bars the opposite way to which you want to go. Counter steering is a subtle nudge of the bars in the opposite direction to which you want to turn in order to get the bike turned off the vertical. It doesn't require much effort. So in order to turn right, we push the bars to the left. If you want to turn left, then we push the bars slightly to the right. It doesn't require much effort, so don't push them too hard. The easiest way to think about doing that is to drop your shoulder into the turn, look through the turn by pointing your nose through the corner and point your elbow towards the road that you're going to bank at. That will have the effect of turning the bike off the vertical into a bank position. The fact that you're leaning into the corner and putting your head towards the turn will tell you that your speed of approach is okay. It's unnatural to lean towards something you're frightened of. If you're frightened, your arms will naturally straighten and you'll go away from the turn. So that tells you, as you're leaning with your elbow in, that you're okay, you come to the bend and we're looking away through the bend for our exit. Once the bike's turned, you can then stabilise the bike's position by accurate use of the throttle because you've got the correct gear selected early enough on the approach. Remember, the only safe way to deal with the corner is to go in under control at a speed you're happy with and then you'll get round the corner smoothly and exit safely with confidence. We'll leave you now with this police rider as he uses the techniques we've discussed to flow smoothly through a series of bends, joining one bend with the next.